Well, thank you so much for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now, some teachers' unions have called on the Basic Education Minister, Angie Motsecha, to make the health and safety of learners her department's top priority. And they say that the phasing in of only three grades, R6 and 11, is an indication that the department is not ready to receive back learners at schools. They also add that the minister has failed to outline a plan to provide psychosocial support for learners as well as teachers in uh, amid the rising coronavirus cases in the country. So to discuss this further, we have the South African Democratic Teachers Union, or SATU's Deputy General Secretary, Nkosana um, Dolopi, and uh, the National Professional Teachers Organization of South Africa, or NAPTOSA's Executive Director, Basil Manuel. Thanks so much, uh, gentlemen, to both of you, and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Good morning, and good morning, Comrade Beza. Uh, Mr. Tolopi, let me start with you. Firstly, can we discuss uh, schools reopening and uh, what are your union's observations from yesterday's reopening for the grades R6 and 11, although uh, we did hear that only those who were ready to take back grade R absolutely should actually allow that. So uh, what was your observation of yesterday's proceedings? In fact, uh, we were vindicated on what happened yesterday. Because for the fact that you have more than 154,000 learners in the Eastern Cape who did not return to school yesterday, uh, for the fact that you have more than 111, grade 11 learners from the Eastern Cape who did not return to school yesterday, for the fact that uh, and many schools in the Western Cape had half in terms of attendance of learners yesterday, it vindicates us that the system was never ready. It was not ready yesterday. That's why many learners could not return in Kwakwa in the free state because of challenges uh, of water. For the fact that the school governing bodies in some part of the Northwest in Portistrom closed schools uh, vindicate us that the, the system was never ready uh, to return or to receive our learners at schools yesterday. So we always raise this point that there was no need for us to rush for the reopening of the schools. We had to spend time as a country and make sure that we attend to a system that was never ready since 1994 up to uh, this month. Uh, so we, I think we should have used this opportunity created by the crisis to attend to the many challenges that we have always experienced in terms of our education system. The question of lack of toilets, the question of uh, the availability of supply of water, the question of over crowded classes, the question of dilapidated structures. I mean, uh, we should have spent this time to do that and then make sure that when we do go back to school, we would have addressed these fundamental questions that we have always faced as a country. Basil Manuel, uh, your observation as NAPTOSA, and of course also uh, you sit with the Department of Education discussing these matters. And uh, given what has happened, you know, how do you explain that to parents in terms of what you are saying uh, in terms of the readiness to return and what the department then says and ultimately does? Let me start by the, the fact that we as unions, the combined union, Satu, Naptoza, and our other teacher unions, we did a survey. And it is that survey which we presented to the department, which, which we showed that none of the provinces were actually fully ready, that there were little groups that may have been as a given. And we also know that it's a static survey and that a lot changes over a short space of time. But my colleague Delopi is absolutely right. Uh, what it has proven, what yesterday has proven, is that the system just wasn't ready. Add to that lack of readiness the fact that many schools closed because of infections. Just in KZN alone, in Peter Maritzburg, 28 schools in one city closed yesterday. Now extrapolate that to the rest of the country and you will see that actually we are, we are not really uh, ensuring that the system is working. But when you leave out an entire province and you leave out all the, uh, the great R's and K's and N, et cetera. That is a clear indication that, of course, our survey was credible. It was correct. But the fact that the ministry themselves reduced the number of returnees indicates that they, too, believed that what we were saying was correct. Uh, unfortunately, they pressed on regardless. 
And there are thousands of schools that still don't have sufficient of those non-pharmaceutical intervention measures that stand between infection and health. And remember, this is not about the teachers. Uh, the teachers have their uh, PPEs, but it's about the children who don't have. <clears throat> and that's where our problem lies. We can't constantly reduce everything to a percentage. Oh, only 1% of teachers have been infected. If 1% is infected, believe me, there are 40% others that are panicking because the 1% was infected. We are not looking at the psychological impact that a day like yesterday brings to bear on the average teacher. And um, uh, speaking to that point, uh, as an Aptosa, you've said that the department has failed to provide a psychosocial support for learners and teachers uh, amidst the rising number of coronavirus cases in the country. We also know that some teachers have died, learners, support staff. So that psychosocial support, have you asked the department and what has been their response? We've been put this constantly, and not only as Naptoza, as the other unions as well. We've constantly said that when the teacher falls ill at a school, believe me, every teacher at the school feels ill. And if somebody dies, even worse. And we've seen cases of deaths. With the learners, it's exactly the same. And of course, that's extended to the parents. So from the very outset, we raised the issue of how important this is. Now, the response has been that we are trying, and we, uh, one province, Free State, said it had one uh, psychologist that could help. Now, one for the entire province just doesn't make sense. And even if you have the call centers, such as has been set up in the Western Cape and, and Gauteng and so on, that still is a very, very large distance away. We've got to rethink the modeling around this. And we've actually advised that maybe we need to have webinar sessions where teachers can log on and see somebody and listen and, of course, also be, be taken along. But one of the greatest uh, uh, absences is good information. If we don't communicate with our members, we leave them to, to be grabbing any piece of literature and read it. And some of the literature is really bad. And the DBE has been pathetic with the quality of literature that we've sent out. In fact, they haven't communicated at all with the teacher in the classroom. The person doing the job hasn't been spoken to and felt spoken to. And this is where the anxiety grows and the fear and the sometimes uh, uh, absolute angst amongst the teachers. Now, Mr. Delopi, if, if we go back to the very beginning where it was announced that learners would be returning to schools, although it would be a phased in approach, already at that uh, instance, there was resistance to this idea of sending uh, children and, of course, teachers back into classrooms, given that we hadn't even peaked as far as the pandemic is concerned. And there's also been a concern about obviously the conditions that schools are in, the resources that are available, and the fact that we are in the winter months. Now, yesterday, Minister Motecha actually admitted that no more than 60% of the school year can be saved. Um, the second term has been wiped out completely. Uh, we're already eating into time in the third term. So let's talk about that. At this stage, what would be the sensible approach to uh, actually maximizing what is left of the academic year? As the combined or the collective unions, we always raised the point that the grade that we thought would be prioritized would have been grade 12. Because we were of the view that uh, this group or this cohort will have to exit the education system and they will have to be prepared to be admitted at institutions of higher learning next year. That's why when we are talking, in fact, when we resisted the reopening of the schools, we're not just about saying it should be a blanket approach. We were saying, let's identify grade 12 as an area of priority, where all of us as a country will then focus our attention on, provide them with the necessary kind of support and make sure that they are assisted to realize the objective of finalizing their schooling years uh, at this year. So we are still saying that, that we still to still try our best, bring our minds together, get our resources together, support the teachers and make sure that these children are assisted to realize their dream of writing their final examination this year. But at the very same time, we at that time also said that we would have discussed, we should be discussing 
with the Department of Higher Education and also with institutions of higher learning to say how are we going to, as a collective, assist these learners even towards uh, 2021 uh, to make sure that we prepare the ground at institutions of higher learning such that they don't find difficulties uh, to be admitted uh, at that level. For all other great Sakina, we have always raised the point that we do have a foundation. These learners were taught from the beginning of the year up to March. These learners were subjected to some one way or the other, some form of uh, testing. They were assessed from January up to March. So as a system, we do have a sense. There is a foundation that we lay during those three months. So we are saying we could delay, even if you reopen the schools in August, in September, you still have time left up to the end of December to add on what you would have done from January up to March. And that could assist you to formulate some, some, some form of assessment and you then be able to say whether a learner can progress then or not. For grades one up to grade 11, we are not under that much pressure because what we, could, we can achieve in 2020, we can still use 2021 and years beyond 2021 to make sure that we recover work left. So we are not under that much pressure. I mean, we must think of the box. We can't think about 2020 as the only year that we are having left. We have many, many years that are there beyond 2020. And we should be able to use those years to make sure that we recover on work that we would have lost uh, in 2020. This is not a normal year. We can't behave as if 2020 is a normal year. This thing disrupted our lives. We should then think about creative ways of saying that how do we then respond to this reality uh, caused by COVID-19. Uh, COVID so we are still emphasizing the point to say that let's go back to discussing what, how we can assist our metric and then we use the school-based assessment for all other grades uh, from grade one up to uh, grade 12. But also we try to minimize this load, the workload and pressure that we are putting on our teachers. Sakina, you know, we are workers of the mind. We are working with the mind. If you put pressure on the mind, you are not going to get any quality education. There will be no learning and teaching. There will only be malicious compliance. I will just comply and tick the boxes because the Department of Education wants us to do this and that. But the real issue here is about learning. We want our children to learn. We want our children to progress. And our children will not be able to learn under an environment of anxiety, under an environment of fear, under an environment of trauma. So, I mean, let's be realistic as educationists that there is no learning, there's no teaching, there's no education that is happening under this condition. That's why we are saying let's try our best, focus on grade 12, assist them, but for the rest of the other grades, there is no rush. You can delay them coming back, and when they do come back, cover whatever you are able to cover, but you will be able to have some work to be able to assess them uh, in November and determine whether they are able to progress and or not. Uh, Basil Manuel, do you agree with that, uh, that at this point it's become a matter of malicious compliance where it's become a tick box exercise as far as learning and teaching is concerned? And also just speaking to the disruption that Mr. Delopi mentions, uh, as it pertains to the matriculants, uh, there have been severe disruptions with schools that have to uh, close every time there's a positive case uh, reported at any of the schools. And what sort of anticipation do you have for the pass rate for the class of 2020 then? So, Kina, let me say that I, I first of all agree with, with Delopi. Uh, secondly, I want to say we're losing a golden opportunity by trying to focus on an, an old method in a very, very different situation. Uh, here we have the opportunity to ensure that those children that are back in the, in the primary school. We are the masters of the curriculum. We are the masters of assessment. It's within our hands. But because we want to stick with what we rigidly know about the curriculum and we want to teach content like we know it, we are making a, a big blunder. What are the biggest weaknesses, if you ask, in our education system at the moment? And without batting an eyelid, everybody, the man in the street will tell you it's reading, it's language, and it's mathematics. So why are we not concentrating on those things in the primary school? Delopi is right. We have time for all the other things. The content subjects, will we will catch up on that. 
We're losing the opportunity because we are stayed in our approach. We are, we are taking our matriculants and we are saying to them, the fact that you've lost three months is immaterial. We will squash it in somehow. Do you know the psychological impact that, ha that that has on the matriculant? But more so even on the parent. If you've been a parent of a matric child, you know that you are in matric as well when that child is in matric. That is how high the stakes are. And we've created that situation in the country. So we need to think very differently about how we are going to embrace what is left of 2020. We have never advocated for the summary closure of schools, but we have said the envir environment must be safe. It must be one and teaching can truly happen. And as Delopi so nicely says, uh, if, if we are not looking after the minds of our teachers, we then have them grudgingly complying. And we don't want that. We want them to embrace the, 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 the compliance. We want them to embrace the job they're doing. And of course, so that those children feel that they have been taught. The universities will wait for us. Uh, even if we, we have have to be a little later with, with uh, results and things like that. But what is important is that the system does move on. We can't have children not coming into grade one. We can't have children not exiting in, in matric. So uh, the system has to be a little more adaptable. Unfortunately, I don't think the DBE foresaw that this could be the reality. I think everybody thought we're locking our doors on a particular day in April, and we are going to just unlock them and life will continue as normal. Well, it hasn't. And now we need to start really embracing what they constantly refer to as the new normal, but they are not making it a new normal. They're still trying to hang on to the old. So we're out of time, 15 seconds each. What happens from here on in if your concerns are not addressed? Uh, Mr. Dolopi and then Mr. Manuel. Look, we are saying the Minister of Education is a minister of all learners in our country. It can't be that the minister closes her eyes to accept that more than 300,000 learners in the Eastern Cape, just in the Eastern Cape alone, are not back in school now. It can't be that the minister closes her eyes to the fact, on ears to the fact that many great arts in Pumalanga, in KZN, in Northern Cape, did not return yesterday. That could take you to close to 500,000 learners who did not return to school. Test. So we are saying, let us have a better conversation. Let us have a conversation to say that how do we turn situate the situation around such that when we do go back to what is referred to as the new normal, it really becomes a true normal. A normal where that would be conducive for learning and teaching to take place and such that our learners should be able to achieve all right. access, quality education for them to be able to progress. Thank you, Mr. Dolopi. Mr. Manuel, very briefly. I want to say to the minister, please keep your ear to the ground and see what is happening to our people. We can't pretend that there is no spike, pretend that we are not in a crisis. So please ensure that you are looking at that. And that is the only way your teachers will trust you. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, National Professional Teachers Organization of South Africa, NAPTOSA's Executive Director, Basil Manuel, as well as uh, SATU's uh, Deputy General Secretary, Nkosana Dolopi, talking to us about their observations from schools reopening yesterday for grades uh, 6 and 11 and some grade arts as well. Let's take a quick break before we end the show.